It would be about par for my evening, for sure. Something would go wrong with the recording. Okay, guys, um, excited to have you with us tonight. Uh, I'm going to talk to you guys about, uh, uh, essentially, uh, hang on, where's my screen? I've got three screens going here. Which one do I click the arrow button on? Here we go. I think this one's right. But tonight we're going to talk to you about how you build credibility and influence and, more importantly, sales uh, through the use of webinars. And I kind of stumbled on this um, accidentally about three years ago. Um, not so much the stumble across the fact that webinars are, you know, something that people like and they enjoy going to and that you can create sales with them, but that they help you build influence and credibility. And without the influence and without the credibility, um, you can't sell things. So webinars um, are a great, great tool. And when I started uh, in social media, literally about three years ago, I started hosting webinars um, to showcase that I knew what I was talking about. That was really my goal. I was like, well, if I can show people that I know Facebook stuff or if I know Twitter stuff or whatever the case was, whatever I was talking about, then, then they'll know that I'm viable and reliable, I'm trustworthy, etc. And that ultimately I can sell things. And it worked. Um, it was a great tool um, to build out that sense of credibility and trust in the fact that I knew what I was talking about. Um, so I had to start this evening with uh, a little bit of humor. Uh, webinar, oh, I'm sorry, I thought you said wine bar. So if you got your wine out, just have a sip, set back, and let's talk about webinars and how we can use them to create sales in our business. Who's got some wine? Anybody? <laughs> there you go, Holly. All right. So we're, we're all set. We're ready to go. Um, what we're going to cover tonight is a, a series of things. Basically, I want to talk to you guys about why webinars are so very important. Um, tips to rock your presentation because there is a science to really good presentations. Um, some webinar tools and uh, four components um, of a great webinar landing page. You know, that's a critical piece of, you know, getting people to sign up for your webinars is, um, you know, what do you have to have on that webinar landing page. And, um, and I think the, the uh, other piece that's really, really important is it's great to have all of that, but if you can't get people to your webinar, um, then, you know, it's kind of a moot point. You're kind of sitting around talking to yourself. So you want to be able to, um, you know, market your webinars and get people um, there uh, using social media. And I have lots of great tips on how you can do that with, um, with social media. Uh, and then the one thing that you must do to create sales uh, on a webinar. Um, in the second webinar that we're going to do this month, we're going to talk a lot more about strategies, um, specific types of strategies, engagement strategies, and um, you know some, some other things that will help you with the sales process. But I thought, uh, you know, just going over the, the processes that, you know, like I talked about here, um, will really, really help you get going and get started and hopefully get you to a point where you're not um, scared to get started because that's usually what people, they're usually a little bit reluctant to get moving on webinars because, well, for a variety of reasons. We'll talk about that um, moving forward too. Um, eight reasons why webinars are so powerful and, and, and you know, again, this is something that I really, some of these pieces and parts I literally have just figured out on my own. Um, but it's a great way for people to check you out and, and see um, versus them buying something from you and, you know, it's not a costly mistake in other words. They don't have to buy something uh, to try you out. It's a great way for them literally just to tap in, get great free information from you um, that's value-based to them and their business without spending any money. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't charge for webinars, and we'll definitely talk about that um, in the next webinar because you can absolutely have a paid webinar series. But I think when you first get started, you have to do the webinars for free. You have to showcase value. You have to showcase that you know what you're talking about. Um, so that you can build out that influence and authority and, and trustworthiness that we were talking about uh, before. And then it's, it's no fear. When you're on a webinar, you realize that there's a lot of people out there just like you that don't know the same things that you don't know. So you're not as fearful of raising your hand. 
and saying, you know, I don't know that. Um, you know, or sometimes people will ask questions um, and you'll be like, wow, I had that same question, but I was afraid to ask. So it's not as intimidating for a lot of people. It's a great way for people to learn and they um, love webinars. And it's a one-on-many model. Um, you know, it's a great way to give value back to your audience without having to do it one-on-one. -on -one. So you can share a lot of great information. You can answer the same question once versus, you know, responding to that question, you know, to a hundred different people, for example. Um, so it's a great, um, it's a great asset from a one-on-many standpoint. And then it's a great word of mouth, uh, you know, as you, as you start to build out your influence and people start to share it. And we're going to talk about word of mouth as a, as a technique for, um, you know, getting more people to your webinars too. But word of mouth as it relates to, to webinars is huge. Um, you can focus on specific topics um, and convert those leads to sales. So one of the things that a lot of people get wrapped up on uh, when it comes to, to trying to decide what they talk about in a webinar, guys, it doesn't have to be difficult. It can be an old blog post that's eight ways to do something, or it could be um, anything. In fact, if you'll look around at some of the webinars that are out there today that people are doing, usually they are eight steps to or nine steps to or, you know, uh, 12 uh, do-it-yourself tips or, you know, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be really difficult. And in fact, you can take an existing blog post of some sort um, and turn it into webinar content. You're just talking it versus um, you know, it being in the written format. So don't make it so difficult. It can be um, very, very easy and, and just keep it simple. Uh, focus on specific types of content. Replay. You can use them. Uh, you can record them as we're doing tonight. You can show them, uh, you know, you can put them on YouTube. You can do a lot of different things to harness the value uh, of a webinar. And then um, you can reach large numbers of people. I mean, it goes back to that one on many, except that, you know, even after you have hosted a webinar and you have, you know, you're sharing information with the people that are on the webinar, the replay can be used later. Um, you can, you know, people are sharing it perhaps if you give them the capability of sharing your webinar. So you have the uh, capability of reaching way more people than even the people that are, you know, in attendance at the physical, physically at the, at the webinar. Like tonight, for example, there's, you know, eight people in attendance. Uh, before this is over, you know, hopefully a hundred or more people will have seen this content from the people that are in, in members that, that are members that are in the inner circle. Um, and again, you know, they're not physically here tonight, but hopefully they'll be able to they'll turn, tune in later and listen to it. So it's a great way to leverage um, the one-on-many model and get more people to see your content. Um, and then there's no travel expenses for people, and for, not only for your, for the people that are in attendance, but for you. I mean, if you were to do a tra a training event somewhere uh, for your audience, um, you would have travel expenses. You would have a hotel. You will you would maybe depending on where where it is. Um, but with this, it's very simple. You can set in your office, in your living room, um, you know, wherever, um, and you can deliver content that's of great value to your audience and you know, it's not only uh, convenient for you, but it's also very convenient for them. Um, okay, and the bottom line is you really want to get them to a place where um, they will buy. Now, there's two types of webinars, guys. There are just the free value-based webinars, and there, there are what I call free value-based webinars that lead to an opportunity to create a sale. Um, so there's both ends of it, but the bottom line is you don't want your audience to get to the end of your webinar if it is a sales generating uh, webinar uh, and, and they say, well, I didn't get enough value, so I'm not going to buy. So you want to make sure that you are creating value that leads to a sale. Uh, it won't work in every case, but you'll be able to tell if you create sales that you've delivered and uh, you know, you've gotten the people that you were meant to get. Um, 
you're building out trust when you're doing that. You have to build out the trust factor. So when you're delivering value to your audience um, repeatedly, you do build out trust. They begin to trust you, that you know what you're talking about, that you have knowledge that they need, and that they're willing to pay for. And this gives you influence in the long haul. And influence is is something that you just can't plop down today and automatically have. You can't even have influence offline and plop down in social media and expect to translate that um, online. It doesn't work. Uh, you have to build it with your audience. That people are just so um, savvier today. They really are savvy and they want a personal connection with the people that they buy from. And they want to feel like they know them in some way or somebody else that they know knows them and has some, some that they can trust that they know what they're talking about. So it's really big that you build out that trust factor, that credibility factor so that you have some influence that and, and you have to have both in order to create sales in my opinion. I don't know of anybody that is doing uh, super well online today that doesn't have influence. They have to have some influence um, and, and their audience has to trust them before they're going to buy for, from them. Does that make sense? It's really critical and so many people don't address this piece. They don't, they don't tell people that they need credibility and influence and a webinar is an amazing way to get it and it's a, a quick and easy way to get it uh, more importantly. Okay, let's get started on some presentation tips. Now, these are really important and I think uh, I'll, I'll tell you something that I learned early on. Uh, well, not real early on. <laughs> it took me a while to learn this. My husband used to tell me this all the time. He, he used to say, don't talk your slides. I'm sorry, D don't read your slides. Talk your slides. And I was like, what? And really, you want to make sure that uh, several things as you start to build out your presentations. But as we go through some of these, some of them you may be like, well, geez, how do you really deliver content like this? But I think you'll find, and if you've been on uh, webinars before, the ones that really hold your attention, and see, this is critical, guys. Um, when you're on a webinar, lots of times there's lots of information flowing and you get sidetracked, the phone and the TV and the, you know, you've still got your computer open so you're Facebooking. But if you really, really want to hold people's attention, you, have, you can't throw so much information at them that they don't process it. They're busy doing something else. They're, you know, if you throw a list of stuff or whatever it is. So as I go through these, hopefully they'll make sense to you. But try to keep um, your slides to one idea per slide. It will make it so much easier for people to process the information and it's quick and easy and people love quick and easy. And um, you want to keep bullet points to a minimum. It doesn't mean that you can't use bullet points, but you want to make sure you keep them down um, and, and try not to use, overuse them. And I see a lot of people overusing them. I've overused them in the past. In some cases, it's hard um, to deliver the content that you want without bullet points. But when you do use bullet points, just make sure that you, again, you know, talk them uh, and, and don't read them off of your slides. And uh, the, font, the font and the, and the uh, size of the font is very important, too. Um, kind of the rule of thumb, and you can see here from this slide, that you really don't want much less than a 30-point um, uh, font size, simply because it gets, it's hard to read if you don't have it at least that big. So this is, again, just a, a great uh, point so that you can make sure that people can read the slides that you are putting out there, um, you know, especially in a video. This is really important. I don't know if you've ever um, been to a webinar recording and you're trying to see the content on a video it's, and the font's just Ill, and not readable. I couldn't say that other word that's not tripping off my tongue. And then don't get too awful busy. Um, you know, keep the noise down. In other words, the graphics on your slide shouldn't be just all over the place to where, again, people can't focus and they're, they're totally distracted by the visuals. 
the best vi the best uh, PowerPoints that I've ever done and the best ones I've ever seen have just been you know using um, you know great powerful powerful images. Tell you, my tongue's getting tripped up tonight. But as you can see, this is just a very power, powerful image. Um, and talk the image. Don't talk. In other words, you're not using a lot of text. You're letting the pictures do the talking, in other words. And they are these types of presentations are just really, really impactful. And it's much easier to talk your presentation than it is to read it. Tell me, trust me on this. I have been around the block on this many times. And um, practice, 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 practice. I can't um, tell you, I can't stress this enough, really. Is, you know, and, and you don't have to practice in front of people. You can literally just practice at home. Um, you know, record it, see what you look like, and, you know, make some adjustments. One of my biggest uh, things that I've had to really work on is um, saying the word um, and you probably, I, I still haven't broke myself with a habit. But if you record yourself, lots of times you can catch those types of things. If you have a bad habit of some sort, you can catch that, that habit. You can see it yourself, and you can start um, trying to work on it. It really does help if you'll just spend the time, practice, and uh, record yourself, watch yourself, and then see where you're, you know, what you would like to change. Uh, it, it really, really does help. All right, let me... I lost my clicker there. And testimonials in a web in a webinar are really impactful as well, especially if you're selling something. Uh, if you are selling something or you're trying to promote something, then you know sharing someone else's experiences. Um, it doesn't always have to be written or you know just a photo of somebody. You can literally invite people onto your webinar. They can talk on your webinar. Um, the visual aspects, if, if it's a webinar like this, for example, where you can see the presenter, um, you can have people live uh, and pop in on your webinar. So the, the testimonials are huge. Uh, I mean, it goes back to that word of mouth thing, and we want to know if somebody else has used the product or service that you're trying to promote or, and you're trying to sell uh, before we buy it. So don't, um, don't discount or don't omit testimonials if you're trying to lead to a, a sale. I think they're really, really powerful. And takeaways. Now this is kind of one of my, I don't know if it's my, it's not a secret because everybody, I don't know if it, everybody does it. But lots of times when you're doing a webinar, um, it's not that you are sharing information that they couldn't get somewhere else. But it's, it's that you are sharing it, they're listening, they're tuning in to you. But if you can give them a tip, a takeaway that they may not know or that they may not have heard and or that they may not have a, a thought to apply in the same way that you're thinking to, that you're suggesting that they apply it, um, just one tidbit that somebody else may not have shared with them is huge. It's amazing how well this does work. Um, especially if you're in a competitive field where there's a lot of noise out there and a lot of other people who are doing webinars, um, if you can share one thing that is kind of a kind of your secret sauce of some sort, I'm not saying you give away all of your tips or your tricks or everything that you know in a webinar, but include at least one huge takeaway so that they can again that'll be the one thing. Um, that they walk away with and they say, oh, wow, I really, really got something of huge value from this webinar. And then let's talk about tools, and there are many of them. And we have looked at webinar tools pretty exhaustively. We just found one uh, that I'm not going to mention tonight because we haven't tested it yet. It looks really good, but I... I just decided I wasn't going to share it with you yet until we test it. And if it surpasses this platform that we're on right now, um, then I will say, hey, go for it. But this, there's again, there's lots of different platforms out there. Um, GoToWebinar. Let me give you a quick tip on GoToWebinar. Many people use GoToWebinar. We used it. In fact, it was the platform we used before we found uh, ClickMeeting. Um, and I. I love, I really do like GoToWebinar except for the fact that 
every once in a while and honestly I can't even say that this is not a symptom of all platforms every once in a while it gave us technical issues it wouldn't record the video where we couldn't it would you know mess up our video and we would have a, a huge mess on our hands uh, but I think that's true of all of the platforms at some point in time you're going to have a technical glitch I mean we had a technical glitch tonight um, so they're not fail proof um, but uh, the tip that I want to share with you on GoToWebinar is you do get 30 days free per email address. So you could, if, as you're first getting started, and it's, it's expensive, it's $99 a month for up to 500, uh, I think it's 500 attendees. Um, and that's pricey. That can be pricey for a, a brand new entrepreneur um, who's just getting started. Um, so you can get 30 days. So my, my tip for you um, on that is go to Gmail, set up a, you know, what I call a throwaway email address, and use that uh, to get 30 days. And then hopefully by the time that your 30-day uh, trial is up, you can go back and sign up for your real e with your real with your real email address, and you can get another 30 days for free. So it's a great way to try it and uh, ultimately get a 60-day window to, you know, have an opportunity to build um, some business and be able to pay for it uh, and not have that outlay. So that's that's one idea. Um, and then click to, click meeting is a we're using that right now. You can see um, it's it's a great little platform. What I like about this platform is you can physically see the presenter, and it gives that personal touch, so people can not only hear your voice inflection, but they can see your face, um, and you know get a sense for you know who you are. So I think the personal touch. Um, is really great, and uh, it's not. It's cheaper than uh, go to webinars, so it's you know it's an op opportunity to to uh, try it at a cheaper rate than uh, than go to webinar. So again, just check some of this out: uh, live stream, WebEx, um, Adobe Connect. A lot of these uh, platforms are great platforms. You just have to figure out which one works best for you. Um, again, looking at the top, if I was to rank them, I would probably, as I know it right now, go with click to meeting and then go to webinar and then go down from there. Um, and again, based on experience and looking at some of their uh, capabilities, etc. Um, let's see. And then the next thing is types of features that you want to look for in your webinars. And I think this is important because some of these are going to be um, valuable to you and to your audience. So you want to make sure that you can show your desktop uh, or a PowerPoint presentation. In some cases, you can do both. Like here on Click Meeting, you can show your desktop uh, or you can upload a PowerPoint presentation. The um, drawback to Click to Meeting and a lot of or Click Meeting and some of the platforms is if you upload your PowerPoint presentation, then you lose all of your animation. So the capability to, of of showing your um, screen, your desktop, is that you you can keep your animation, which is nice if you do use animation in your slide. Per, like for example, like I'm doing right now, you know I have the um, I have you know the the things flying in and you know things of that nature. Um, audio options. You want to make sure you have phone and uh, voice over internet uh, connectivity so that people can connect using their um, their uh, computers, laptops, um, you know, iPhones in some cases. But you also want them to be able to phone in if they don't have access to you know one of these other options. So it's important to have both. Uh, polls, comments, Q and A's are all great tools uh, for webinars, and you definitely want to have those. I think because they have um, application on so many levels. Um, you know, the Q and A in particular is really, really big. Having multiple presenters is really big. Uh, you want to make sure you have the recording capability. That's huge because again, uh, you know, you want to be able to replay these, use them as uh, marketing tools, etc. There's lots of applications for the recordings. And then um, reporting, you want to know who's attended. You know, you want to, you may want to see the Q and A questions at a later point in time. And uh, the biggie, this is the biggie, 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 the motherload here is how many attendees are you paying for? 
Um, with uh, GoToWebinar, for example, you are going to pay way more, um, and more and more, in fact, um, as your level of number of attendees goes up. So, you know, at one point in time, we were getting almost a thousand um, attendees to our webinars, and we were, you know, with GoToWebinar, we were paying, you know, seven, eight, nine hundred bucks a month for GoToWebinar. So it can get really, really pricey as the number of attendees to your webinars goes up based on the platform that you're using. So this is a huge um, thing that you need to pay attention to, the cost associated with the number of attendees. And as you, when you first start, it's not that big of a deal, but as your, as your attendees um, increase, then it can get really pricey really quickly. Okay, four components of a great webinar landing page. Um, you want a great headline that says what it is. Um, in other words, you want to make sure you're telling people, you know, what it is, what it is that they're going to get um, when they come to your webinar. And a subheadline is just more details. And I'm going to show you an example of this in just a minute. Um, a subheadline, and then tell them what you're going to tell them. You know, I used, I had a, uh, when I was working on my master's degree, I had a professor that said, you, t um, basically the way you write a paper is, you know, you, you make your case, you tell them what you're going to tell them, then you tell them what you're going to tell them again, and, uh, and then you restate what you told them. So it's kind of, that's kind of um, what we're doing here is you're going to tell them what you're going to tell them. In other words, what value they're going to get from the webinar that you are presenting to them, the benefits, in other words. That's really what it amounts to. Uh, you know, if it's seven ways to do this, or yeah, it, you need to break it down uh, inside of that. And again, I'm going to show you an example of, uh, of a great webinar landing page in just a minute. So some of this will make a little bit more sense. And then you absolutely want a strong call to action. You know, register now, uh, grab your seat, uh, you know, whatever your call to action is. Don't forget your call to action. Okay, here's a um, great looking uh, website. I'm sorry, great looking web, uh, a great looking webinar landing page. Uh, it says, you know, uh, and, and looking good is half the battle, guys. You know, if you have a poor landing page, it's not going to convert well. It's just like a landing page on your face, a, um, if you are using your Facebook apps, uh, and uh, in the capacity of a landing page, if it doesn't look good, then people are not going to, to opt in or they're not going to do what you want them to do. So your landing page, wherever it is, if it's on your website or if you're going to build a landing page on your Facebook page, wherever it is, it needs to look good. Um, this particular one is, it, it tells you what it is. It says the you know, webinar um, is, title is What's Working in 2013. It goes on, the, the subheadline is the seven sneakiest tricks and hacks we've discovered that can double your business in the next 90 days. Now that's intriguing, right? So you get them with the webinar title, that's the headline, that's what it is, and then you tell them a little bit more detail in the subheading, and then you go on to tell them, you know, the benefits. And it, you can't see all of it here, but literally he lists, you know, a whole bunch of benefits from, you know, that they're going to receive from coming in and signing up for his webinar. And you'll notice right here in bright yellow, it's very clear what his call to action is. Yes, claim my spot now. So you definitely want to include these four things in your landing page. It's, it's really, really important. Okay, now let's talk about the fun stuff. How do we get people to our webinar using social media? More importantly, you want to make sure that you're getting the right people to your webinar. Uh, it's similarly to anything else you do. You know, targeting your ideal client um, is very important um, when you're presenting a webinar. I mean, it does you no good to have a bunch of people on a webinar that are not your ideal client that will not buy from you. Um, so the word of mouth um, option and you know providing a link uh, to a webinar and share options is is really important. And I'm going to share with you uh, several ways that you can do that and how you can get not only um, you're sharing it, but ultimately you can get other people to share it as well. 
Okay, let's start with Facebook. Now, Facebook is, I'm, I'm, I've got more Facebook tips tonight than I have uh, some of the other platforms simply because Facebook has an advertising mechanism. And they also have a couple of different uh, ways that you can build out um, visibility for your webinar. So let me start to explain what I mean by all of this. You can start with a timeline cover, a timeline cover that showcases that you're having a webinar, when it is, where, uh, you know, what the title is, um, you know, whatever the case is. I've seen a lot of people um, do a timeline cover and then they omit to put in the description how, the, how people sign up for it. So don't leave that piece out. If you're going to go to all the trouble to build a web, I mean, build a timeline cover um, that showcases that you're having a webinar, make sure you tell people how they can sign up for it, uh, and do that in the description area. You can on Facebook if you put this on your fan page. Um, obviously, you would want to do so. You can highlight it to give it more visibility. Um, if you want to go over to Fiverr, that's F-I-V-E-R-R dot com, uh, and get a, somebody to build a timeline cover for you for five bucks, it's a cheap way to, you know, create visibility for your webinar. Um, so I'd encourage you to take, take advantage of that. You may have a graphic artist already, you may have another source, you may do it yourself. But whatever the case is, um, I definitely encourage you to, to leverage your timeline cover because it works. One of the best tips that I have for you tonight, honestly, is building out your webinar landing pages on your Facebook page, on your Facebook business page or your fan page, whatever you want to call it. Um, the nice thing about doing this is when you are trying to advertise on Facebook, you're going to get a higher conversion when you're sending traffic to, to a, a landing page within Facebook. It's just proven. It's, it converts higher than if you're sending them um, to a landing page off of Facebook, perhaps on your website, for example. It doesn't mean that you can't do that, so I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying that this is a great technique um, to get more leverage off of your advertising dollar. So if you build out an app on your Facebook page um, that, you know, again, showcases um, what it is and, you know, what benefit they're going to get from it uh, and how they sign up, uh, literally you can create those on your Facebook page. Um, you can do so using Heyo or some of the other apps that are the app creators that are out there. Um, I think Heyo is probably one of the easier ones. Um, and I think they allow you to do one for free, if I'm not mistaken. Hopefully I'm not misstating that right now because I know they recently changed some stuff up. Uh, but they are very inexpensive if not. Um, you can uh, probably find somebody on Fiverr to do it for you as well. But I don't know, you know, again, if you're going to do this, it needs to look good. Uh, whether it's on your Facebook page or whether it is um, on a landing page on your website. Either way, you want it to look good. And you can uh, use a promoted post. You know, you may have a graphic that's, you know, the right size. If you don't, you want to make one. Uh, you can use it as a promoted post or a Facebook ad. Um, the kicker, though, to these are that they have to maintain the 20% um, rule on the text. Uh, this is something that gets kicked back on us all the time. Every time we, you know, trying to advertise, we have to be very, very careful with the amount of text that we have on the on the graphic. So you want it to pop, but uh, I think Mari's done a great one here, where you know it's very visual, it looks great. And um, again, it gives the title of her webinar um, on here. Um, let's see. Here's a couple of, of other ideas. Um, uh, Amy Porterfield is using a video. So she's made a quick video about her webinar to entice you to come. Uh, she uh, puts that up on her fan page, of course. You can create an ad using that video if you choose to do so. Um, and you can just do a straight up text uh, one as well. Uh, here's one that Heyo did 
where you know they're just using uh, text and um, a video as well. You know, so the video um, the the videos work. A lot of people uh, you know will click on those, listen to the personal invitation that you issue, what they're going to get from the webinar. Um, you can leave them uh, on your Facebook page just as they are, just like that, or you can leverage them again, like I said, um, uh, by creating an ad uh, using, the, um, using the videos. So both work. Depends on your budget and what you want to do. You can also create an, an event on Facebook. So if you create an event, and I would encourage you to do this regardless, they're free, they don't cost you anything, so there's no reason that you shouldn't do this. Um, and then invite people uh, to the webinar uh, through the event feature. You know, you can invite um, whomever you would, you know, you may have a, a list of previous attendees that you want to invite to the next uh, webinar that you host. Or um, you could use Graph Search to find people that are interested that you think would be your ideal client and invite them to your webinar personally. Um, you know, some people think, well, this isn't this invasive? Uh, I think if you're careful with this, um, that you could really, really do some massive uh, and very um, targeted um, invitations. And I don't see why you shouldn't do this. I would. I have done this a couple of times. Uh, Sometimes, one time in particular, I felt like it really worked very well. Uh, so I'd encourage you to at least try it and see if it works. Always use the events, though. If you want to use Graph Search to try to find your ideal client and invite them to your webinar, uh, that's just an extra layer uh, and definitely one that I think works if you uh, use it appropriately. And, um, you know, everybody loves a giveaway. So you can entice people to come to your webinar by advertising something that you're giving away. Um, and, you know, I see a lot of people doing, you know, iPads or, you know, I'm not suggesting you give away an iPad unless you can, so you, unless you can afford to do so. I mean, they are great giveaways. I'm not, not knocking that at all. But perhaps you could choose something that's not so expensive, uh, especially when you're first getting started if you choose to use this technique. Now, in this case, this gentleman is using, um, you know, he's given away knobs and a magic thimble, but you could you, you could give away 30 minute, if you're a coach, for example, you could give away um, a 30 minute uh, coaching session. There's lots of ways that you could leverage uh, your time as a giveaway versus something that's going to cost you money. Um, so again, um, just, a, just an idea, guys. It's a great way to get people to come to your webinar. They have to physically be on the webinar, in other words, to win. Um, it works. Okay, let's talk about Twitter. Now, Twitter is, um, it moves very rapidly. It's, it's a news stream instead of a news feed. That's kind of my, you know, on Facebook, things don't move as quickly as they do on Twitter, and you can't um, share as much information um, on Facebook in an acceptable way as you can on Twitter. So my suggestion, and it's worked, and, I can't even tell you how well it's worked. I, I um, highly suggest that you do what I'm getting ready to share with you, is build a list of tweets, maybe um, six, eight, ten tweets that invite people in different language, uh, same message, different language, uh, to your webinar. Um, and then share them routinely on Twitter. So you could schedule them maybe three or four times during the course of a day, uh, you know, maybe nine, 12, 3, 6, whatever time slots that you feel like uh, you could target your ideal client and they might see um, that particular tweet. Um, but definitely, you know, share that invitation to come join your webinar, your free webinar. Make sure you use the word free uh, because, I, again, that's a word that a lot of people uh, will tap into. And, um, again, this works, guys. If you will share this on Twitter, you will get people to come to your webinar from Twitter. They will sign up, um, and you'll have you know more visibility. Gives you an opportunity to build out that credibility and, and influence that you're looking for, so that you can create sales. If you already have influence, then then it's a whole different thing. All right, I'm getting ready to give you another secret tip. 
use the hashtag webinar when you're advertising your webinar. That means whether you're advertising it on Facebook, whether you're advertising it on Twitter, wherever you're advertising it, use the hashtag webinar. You can also um, hashtag a specific webinar, you know, like say for example, um, do it yourself social. That's one of the hashtags that we're using uh, when we're doing the do it yourself webinar series. So you can leverage a hashtag that you choose that brands that, that's tied to the branding of your webinar series or your webinar or, or just your business in general. But include the hashtag webinar because if you go to Facebook right now and you do a search for hashtag webinar, you will find a whole bunch of webinars that are where people are advertising their webinars. So if you are searching for hashtag webinar and you can start to get other people, either they're searching for hashtag webinar, they may find you using the hashtag webinar, or as more and more people get used to looking for content on Facebook um, around hashtags, you are going to be leading the forefront um, of this. In other words, your content will be found and you'll have the capability of, you know, leveraging this tip before a lot of other people do. Um, on Twitter, though, people are actively searching for content already using hashtags. Not only are they searching for content on Twitter, but they're also doing the same on uh, Google+. Google Plus and, um, and Twitter are very content driven. So people are used to and actively searching for content there. So that's why you absolutely want to, to use the hashtag webinar. People may not be looking for do it yourself social, for example, hashtag do it yourself social, but they may be looking for webinars that they can attend. So they may be searching on Facebook and I'm sorry, on uh, Twitter and Google Plus for hashtag webinar. Uh, for webinars that they could attend. So this is a great tip that um, I, I, again, I encourage you. I know Facebook is not, a lot of people aren't leveraging Facebook with hashtags quite as much yet as they are on, face, on Twitter and Google+, but it's coming. I think it's coming. And uh, again, you'll be on the forefront uh, of that trend when it does get, uh, when people do start to use it more. I use it frequently because, but I'm used to using the hashtags. I use them on Facebook, I use them on Twitter, I use them on Google+, um, even on Pinterest. But, um, you know, I know a lot of, not as many people are using them on Facebook as they do on uh, Google+, and Twitter. So it's a great, great tip, guys. Um, Google+, you can take the tile that you use to put on, to advertise on your Facebook page, you can upload that to Google+. Uh, in fact, guys, it's, I've been reading a lot, of, um, a lot of articles recently about how, uh, how many time or how many uh, retweets are, um, oh goodness, how many more retweets are happening uh, based off of the fact that people are, are tweeting a photo. So, you know, we're talking about uploading to uh, your graphic to Twitter, I'm sorry, to Facebook and to Google Plus because there's graphic aspects there. But don't forget Twitter as well. When, you're, when you are advertising your, um, your webinar over there, use the graphic because they, it's just, I mean, I don't know how many articles I've read in the last week about um, the, st the stats on photos on, um, on Twitter. So don't, don't uh, negate Twitter or don't think that you can't use your, um, your graphic on Twitter as well because it, those that are using graphics on Twitter, uh, according to everything I've read lately, they're getting a lot more retweets uh, than, you know, just straight up text. So, Again, just a great little tip, hopefully. But share the visual, share the text, share it. Let people know that you're you're doing a webinar. It's a great way, again, to build out that that visibility so that you can get people to your webinars. And then the one thing that you do not want to leave off, the one thing that you have to do before you can create a sale. Anybody got any ideas what that is? Oh, good point, uh, Shelley. I just saw your your tip on Mari Smith recently advertised her in, uh, live stream on Instagram. Yes, you know I didn't mention some of the other platforms: Pinterest, uh, Instagram, 
pretty much all of them, guys. LinkedIn holds a lot of value from a webinar standpoint. Um, obviously, you know, you could you could do the same thing that you're doing on Twitter. You know, sharing throughout the course of the day. Maybe maybe not as much on LinkedIn, but a couple of times a day, you could be sharing the link on your um, LinkedIn profile to try to generate uh, signups on LinkedIn. Just come up with a plan uh, and implement it. You know, am I going to share it? Are you going to share it in all those places? If you are, then you know, start doing it. Make sure you do it daily for a period of time. I would, depending on how large you want your webinar to be, um, you have to allow some marketing time. I would not uh, do a, a major webinar without a, at least a couple of weeks um, uh, time frame for the marketing piece to, to really get the maximum benefit from it. Um, it's hard to really leverage and get the word out without having you know a couple of weeks um, to to build on and to get the again to get the word out. But the one thing that you absolutely have to do to create sales um, at the end of a webinar is you have to ask for it. And this is the toughest part for many, many of us. When I first started and still to this day, I'm not a pushy salesy person. I am not, uh, I do not want to be the person that, that people feel like I've misled them. You know, I don't want them to think that, you know, I've, I've uh, got them into my uh, web under false pretenses just to sell them something. So it's been a very hard um, thing in some case for me to do. So usually what I do on the front side of, um, of my webinars is I'll usually let people know uh, that we have something awesome to share and hang out and, and you know wait until the end to see what's going on. Or, I'm, or you can be just up front at the very beginning uh, and let people know um, that you do have something for sale at the end. Either way, um, you have to let you know you have to ask for the sale. So there is a soft way and there is a hard way to do this. Um, you know, you go through the process of the webinar and then you just go right in the sales pitch, or you lead with the value of what you're selling. Uh, I've seen a lot of people do this very successfully. You know, uh, that's one of the things that we're doing with the Do It Yourself webinar series where, you know, once a month we're trying to do a Do It Yourself webinar um, where we're giving Do It Yourself tips, uh, but we're, you know, trying to upsell the Do It Yourself uh, social media inner circle. So, it, you know, it depends on, you know, what it is. Lots of times you'll see people who will do this with products that they're selling. They'll do a webinar where they're giving great value on the front side, um, and a lot of that information is actually in the product that they're selling you. But, it, again, it gives the impression that, wow, if they're giving this all, all this information to us for free, what else do they know, and this product has to be valuable. Uh, I mean, they're not dumping everything that they, that's in the product on, on you in the webinar, but they're giving you a taste of it so that you're intrigued enough that you will buy it. Um, so that's one way. Um, you know, I've, I've been on webinars that are, you know, have been successful in, in both scenarios, whether you're just hard selling somebody um, or you're doing a soft sale at the end of, you know, something. Uh, personally, I, ref I prefer and am much more comfortable with a soft sale, you know, where I am quick and to the point um, on what it is that I'm selling and I don't belabor it. I don't spend 30 minutes telling you why you got to have it. Um, you know, I, pres I give great value, spend the majority of my time there. I highlight what I have for sale and then I move on. So that's my approach. It doesn't mean it has to be yours, but um, I, you know, again, I think that, as I said with social media, I say this all the time, social media is not a one-size-fits-all and neither are the marketing techniques that you use. What the marketing techniques that you use have to feel good to you. And if they don't, then, you know, it's a moot point. So you have to come across authentically to your audience and what feels good to you um, is what you should do. You know, if, if, a hard, if you're comfortable with a hard sale, then go with a hard sale. Um, if you, you know, are a little bit reluctant, not quite sure, you know, if you really want to come across as a super, super duper salesperson, then, you know, go for the soft sale. But you have to present what you have for sale. If you don't tell people you have something for sale, then you can't sell anything. Um, now, if you have nothing for sale, 
let's because there is cases where you may not have anything for sale. You may just be doing uh, webinars on the front side to give value, showcase value, um, and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. In fact, I highly recommend that you do this, especially if you're just getting started um, trying to build out your credibility and your influence. Um, because again, it, it's hard for you to sell things uh, day one on a webinar if you don't have some trust and credibility uh, and influence with your audience. So you know you're probably going to have to start out with giving free value out the gate, and then you lead into and build out. Um, but but there are cases where you may not have a product for sale. You may be selling your expertise. In other words, let's say, for example, you know, well, let's just use the social media. Um, I, I'll just use myself for an example. Um, maybe I, I do a webinar, and I did a lot of these um, on the front side of my business when I first got started. I would do a webinar showcasing my value in something. So maybe it was Facebook ads, for example. And then, you know, I never ask for a sale. Um, you know, at the end, I would always say, you know, if you have any more questions, uh, I would entertain questions, of course, on the webinar. And then I would give my contact information. And routinely, um, I would create business uh, from a webinar simply because I showcased value uh, and people got a sense that I knew what I was talking about and they would contact me privately and in many cases I was able to convert um, those leads to sales. So there are opportunities that are straight up you know value based webinars where you're just showcasing your your knowledge base and people will connect with you and you'll be able to create sales like that. Um, so hopefully this has been, um, you know, something that I've given you a lot to think about and you've gotten an opportunity to, to say, okay, I'm going to rush out and do a webinar, right? Uh, but the very last thing that I want to, you know, make sure everybody is aware of and I think that you, sh and I'm pretty sure this is a given for all of you, but I, I really think there is a um, huge value in Q&As on a webinar. Um, you know, I see people in some cases where they just cut off the Q&As and, you know, or their pet, you know, where they just, they'll take a few questions before and they answer them. They are not really from their audience. Um, and again, I, I think that's inauthentic and I would encourage you just to, you know, really get in touch with your, your, um, your audience and let them ask you questions. Um, you know, in some cases it may be too deep, you may not want to go into it, just tell them, you know, or if you don't know the answer, just tell them and say, you know, I, you know, I'm not quite sure about that, but I'll research that and I'll get back to you, you know, shoot me an email to remind me. Um, you know, it's just a great way to connect, to show your authenticity uh, and be real with your audience. So the Q&As I think are really, really valuable. So with, with that said, I'm going to, you know, Take questions tonight. You guys can ask me questions uh, down under and I'll be happy to answer. How much is too much info to share? I'm guilty of giving away the whole farm because I want to help everyone. Oh my goodness, been there, done that, Andrea. Um, let me say that if you narrow the focus of your webinar, it really, really helps. In other words, seven ways to do such and such. Or, you know, in other words, Make sure that your audience knows exactly what you're going to give them and just give them that. Focus in on that information and then if you get questions at the end that are outside of that scope of that, then, you know, just say, say as much. You know, I really wanted to focus this webinar on this topic and, uh, I mean, be nice about it, but try, try to keep them focused on the content that you gave versus trying to let them expand uh, outside of that topic. Hopefully that helps. It's really important to keep the, the content of your, um, of your webinar focused so that you're not all over the place. Because if you're all over the place, then that leaves your audience, it leaves the door open to your audience being all over the place too. Hopefully that helps a little bit. Okay, um, Deborah says, is 20 minutes too short for a webinar? I don't think uh, there is a hard and fast rule on, you know, a webinar length. In fact, um, I think in most cases, webinars that are, you know, 30 minutes to 45 minutes, 45 minutes max is, is really 
um, you know, a lot of webinars, in fact, in fact, today are about 45 minutes with 15-minute Q and A's. Um, that's pretty standard, I think, across the board. But um, I see no real problem with having a 20-minute webinar with a 10-minute Q and A. Um, I think I, I, I think there is nothing wrong with that. And then Shelly says you didn't mention instant teleseminar. Is that because it's a teleseminar and not a webinar or because you don't recommend them? No, actually, um, teleseminars are, are great. And I'm not saying that they aren't. I highly um, recommend them. I think there's a lot of value in them. I just think there's, there's a lot of value in the webinar in the sense that it's visual. Uh, content is going more and more towards a visual, um, in my opinion, and I think people consume content in a visual way. Um, there is definitely a place for teleseminars, and again, I'm not negating the, that at all. Um, but I, you know, just again, for purposes of keeping it simple, I just stuck with more of a webinar-based style tonight, Shelley. And what is the 20% rule you mentioned when you were talking about uh, the Facebook graphic? Uh, Deborah, there is a 20% rule on, on Facebook, and that's on any uh, Facebook advertising that you want to do. When I say 20% rule, that means 20% text. You can't have more than 20% text on a graphic that you want to use in your Facebook advertising. Um, it used to be that way on your Facebook uh, timeline cover, and then they lifted that restriction. Unfortunately, they haven't lifted the restriction on um, the ads that you place on Facebook. I wish they would, and hopefully they will at some point, but they're again trying to force us to be more visual and you know get away from, from text. Although, in my opinion, a graphic can be both, but they didn't ask my opinion. Drat it. Okay. Any other questions, guys? I, you know, I really can't stress enough how very valuable a webinar can be to your business. Or the, you know, whether it's a series of webinars, or whether you, you know, that are themed, or whether it's just a webinar that you randomly pick and you do one a month or one a week, or, you know, you have, you know, your schedule and you know what you can physically do. Webinars are time consuming in the sense of creating the content unless you already have the content and, um, you know, or, I mean, there's options for that. You can hire people to do your content uh, and put your presentations together too. But um, if you're just starting out, you, you know, it, that's an expense that you probably don't want to incur. So do them uh, on a schedule that feels good to you, and, but don't not do them, guys, because they work. They absolutely work. Okay, any other questions, guys? We ran over just a little bit. You guys get me talking. I'm sorry. I, of course, I guess with the del actually we're probably right on time with the little snafu we had at the at the beginning. Well, I want to thank you guys for uh, tuning in tonight and sharing a piece of your evening with me. Um, and letting me share what I know, and hopefully it'll be something that can impact your business. Um, I know it will if you'll do it, if you'll run right out and, in fact, if uh, let's just start a thread in the, um, in the Do It Yourself group with a commitment, and maybe we can brainstorm some titles for you guys. Is anybody interested in that? Because that's one of the biggest, yes, okay, awesome. Because I think that's one of the biggest um, concerns a lot of people have is, you know, what do I talk about? What do I share? And it really doesn't have to be that hard. So, I mean, I would be willing to bet you guys have already got content, um, blog content, uh, perhaps some, something on your computer that you could turn into um, a ready-made um, webinar in no time. So let's just, we'll brainstorm. We'll do a little bit of brainstorming in the group and come up with some ideas for you guys, anybody that's interested. So I'll start that as soon as I get off the webinar tonight, okay? Thanks, guys. Take care. God bless.